Hey everybody, welcome back to the adventures of... I want to say you got McGonagall, but that's a whole different LP. Anton Rain. Man, last time I thought I was going to calm that crowd down with my amazing oral skills. Unfortunately, they were a little too testy for me. Ooh, a report on the Bluetish Freedom Front under new leadership. What are the odds that the new leadership are maybe nice guys? Security forces have gathered intel regarding a hidden meeting among local leaders of the separatist group, the Bluetish Freedom Front. That's the militant wing of the Bludes who want independence. Uh, this meeting happened a few days ago. It is suspected that they have elected a new leader in the meeting. All in Arge. Who is the brother of the infamous former leader, Doolin Arge. This development could have serious implications for national security, as the Bluetish Freedom Front has been known to use violent means to achieve their goals. The situation calls for increased surveillance and intelligence, gathering to prevent any potential threats posed by the organization and its new leadership. Alright, what else we got going on? I think that's the only thing left. The Stability Order of 1954. In an investigation on the influence of the Young Swords, that's the ultra-right kiddo organization, and the Red Youth, or the commie kids as I call them, uh, what was it? An investigation on the influence of these two groups uh, on the post-assassination unrest has concluded. Both organizations haven't officially organized or called for illegal actions, but several low- to mid-level leaders from both have links to insightful actions that led to deaths, injuries, and instability. This allows us to ban the organizations. I'll be honest, I don't have to think long about this. We're not banning anything. Um, if, if we're going to make criminals of everybody, then we're just going to have more criminals, right? Only a small percentage of these groups are dickheads. We're not going to ban the organizations because a small amount of them are dickheads. All right, what else we got going on? All right, we got the green bill and then finalize the drafted constitutional changes. Constitution sounds more interesting. Let's get this green bill hippie nonsense out of the way. They want us to spend money on it? I think I'm going to probably veto it. What do you think? Let's read about it, though. The Gruny Regeneration, an ecological economic nurturing. The Green has been proposed by the Assembly, aiming to encourage a more sustainable approach to industry in Gruny. Section 1 of this Act would impose stricter regulations on industrial pollution and waste disposal, particularly in the Gruny region. Businesses not complying with these new standards may face a hefty fine, the revenue from which would be invested back into environmental recovery projects. I like that part. Section 2 proposes to offer tax breaks to businesses that can demonstrate a significant reduction in their environmental impact over a period of time. A small investment fund is created for eco-friendly business practices. Okay, Section 1... I like that. I'm, 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 I'm pro-environment. The economy is the biggest thing for us to worry about right now. But I'm not going to spend government budget to give companies tax breaks. Veto. Uh-oh, news. I don't know if I want to read it. The hippie paper is going to be like, he's so mean. Oh, wait, the holstered post, who normally is not approving of us. Says, Green Act vetoed a pragmatic move. That's me, Mr. Pragmatism. Ah, they say, we made a good choice. We care about the environment, but not enough to hurt the economy. And the radical pricing were awful. Yeah, the veto on the Green Bill, misstep for Swordland. Eat it, hippies. Let's work on the Constitution. So you say you want a new Constitution? I was walk, walk, walk into my office since today was the day to edit and make the final changes for the proposal to change the Constitution of Swordland. The Reform Committee finally bore tangible results, and the draft of the changes were about to be presented to me. Yes, present for me. I walked in the marble corridors of the palace, thinking about the huge decision I was going to take. It's me! At the entrance to my office, my secretary, Livia, greeted me. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Livia. How are you today, sir? Um, I'm perfectly fine. 
I'm not gonna hit on her. I can say I feel better <laughs> since I've seen you. Now I'm perfectly fine, Livia. Good to hear. She paused before taking my coat. It looked like she had something on her mind. Oh no, women problems. Am I right? Am I right? <laughs> now it's gonna be something serious. Now that I was an asshole about it. Mr. Rain, can you give me a hint about your reform plans? If you ask me, taking away the judge's immunity is long overdue, but it might anger a lot of people in these halls. How is this bitch not a spy? Like, she's, like, listening on meetings, and now she wants the secret inside scoop about what's going on? I, I kind of want to say this part. You'll find out with the rest of Sorlin, but I'm not going to call her a sweetheart. That's inappropriate. Um, I'm just going to be neutral. I'll take that into consideration. I hope you keep me informed. I'll take your coat now. Livia left to hang up my coat. I entered my office and sat down. Why in the world did Peter hire her? Not long after, Peter, Lucian, and Nia arrived. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Mr. President. And good morning. Finally, uh, it's time to get this proposal going, huh? Peter placed the draft in front of me. After your modifications, we will start the process. Um, can we go out over each of the points that are in discussion for the draft? Or should we just start? Fuck it, let's be thorough. I mean, as much as I like to half-ass things, this is the Constitution that will hopefully exist for at least a few years, if not more. Well, apart from the first two sections of decreasing the Supreme Court's authority and limiting the presidential vetoes, nothing else has been agreed upon on unanimously. We could start talking about Section 3. This is about the impeachment process of the president. Currently, in cases of high treason and breaking the Constitution, the Supreme Court may impeach and try the president. What? Can they do this alone? Without without Congress? Without the National Assembly? Oh, man, I better not... I'm, I'm glad I've been diplomatic with those dipshits. Oh, wait, Nia's on the court. Don't tell them I called them dipshits, you dipshit. Most reformists want the impeachment to be initiated by the Assembly. I would rather that, too. They think they do not have any power over potential rogue presidents that would abuse their power. Yeah, yeah, I agree. The Assembly should have oversight over the president. Because it is the most democratic institution. This law is particularly dangerous for you in this case. We will be going against the old guard. And if we prove to be successful in the assembly, they will be looking for anything they can declare unconstitutional to tackle you. All they need is the Supreme Court to impeach you. Yeah, I kind of just figured that out, Pete. But thanks. Uh, we should define a better impeachment process. That's what we need. Yes. We will be collaboratively working on the specifics. Are you drinking, Nia? Section 4. This is regarding the appointment of ministers. Currently, the president is free to appoint anyone from the members of the assembly. Nobody else is involved with the process. There is definitely a demand to involve the assembly in the process. Hey, I, gotta, I can only pick you idiots if you've already been elected to the assembly, right? So... Is, that's part of the process. I mean, I guess... I guess we could introduce a confidence vote, maybe? That was my suggestion as well. Sure it was, honey. And I'm sure the reformists would completely support that. See, right now I don't have a problem with the reformists. They seem to be more on the page with me than my own party. It's our own party we gotta worry about. Uh, the fifth section is about our infamous electoral threshold. Most reformists want to lower the threshold as much, much as possible. Mr. Richter and his Pifja party, the People's Freedom and Justice Party, wants to see change on this topic. They find our 10% threshold to be anti-democratic, which is something I also agree on. Yeah, I do too, Nia. Uh, but this is a delicate matter. The party, and I mean, not even Elbin wants us to change the threshold. They think that, well, this would destroy our party in the long term. This is where I'm going to stare Peter in the eyes and like, you don't understand, Peter. We're not trying to make our party stronger. We're trying to make our party obsolete. We're trying to make it so there's no longer a soulless party 
that rules everything. But we want the power to be given to the people and their representatives, and either our party will die or evolve, but the party as it is now will die. It's just whether or not it'll be reborn in the future. Not wrong. The 10% threshold is what allowed us to control half of the assembly with around one-third of the majority in the elections. And I think that's a problem. Yeah, it worked for us temporarily, but that's... That's not a way to lead long-term, because there will be great dissatisfaction. I'm not going to ask if it hurts the party. We definitely should work to decrease the threshold for better representation for the people. Part of the reason we have problems with, like, the Bloods and other small groups that are so angry and are turning to violence is because they have no political outlet. They have no voice. They have no representation, despite the fact they have millions of votes. I agree. Even after Sol's resignation, we still have three parties in the assembly. Even Mr. Kivner's NFP is barely elected. And by that, that's the ultra-righties. And don't forget that the Communist Party and the Workers' Party of Bludia both had close to 10% vote in the last election. You, you would be opening their way into Parliament in the future if you were to decrease the threshold. It is important that you realize this. I do realize this. We'll never solve the problem with Bloods being disenfranchised if we keep them disenfranchised. Of course, that would also mean the USP might lose its majority in the Assembly, sir. I realize that, Lucian. I'm going to say something that's honest here. <laughs> I want to be more diplomatic and say, don't worry, we'll be more popular than ever we might be. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Lucian know what's going on. If our own democracy is the reason of our downfall, then we will have to accept it, Lucian. It is our job to make a future that, so our kids and our grandkids don't have to live like we did. I agree with you, Mr. President. Lucian continued with the next section. Uh, section 6. This is about the presidential decrees. Reformists demand more limitations to the president's executive powers. Mr. Richter has demanded them to be completely removed. I don't think we've used any of them yet, have we? I decree myself to be awesome at, uh, water skiing with one foot. I have suggested to bring some limitations to decrees regarding their applicability. While we keep them, we should try to make sure that they will only be used in emergency situations. And we could also make it dependent on an enabling act from the assembly. Sure, it would make the whole process longer, but as long as we have a majority, nothing really changes. That is the most astute thing Peter has ever said. Peter's like, well, we could give up some power in name only, and if we really do lose the power in the assembly, then yeah, we won't be able to use decrees, but whatever. I think we'll work with the reformists to limit the use of the decrees. Friends will probably demand that we remove them completely, but he forgets that Swordland is a presidential republic. Uh, next one is such as seven term limits. Uh, I like I like that this answer I could say, uh oh, I'm not going to. We need term limits. Number one, I promised them to my wife. <laughs> Anton promised his wife that he didn't want to be president forever. So yes, term limits are necessary. Agreed. I agree. We can't allow somebody like Sol holding onto his seat for two decades again. I'm so glad you're not my wife with that voice. Hey, if people keep electing one person, that means they really are content. The masses are scared of change. Even Sol knew he had to leave, but we will leave it to the president to decide. No, we have to have term limits. Uh, you know what, Lucian? Yes, he did. Sol knew eventually it was time to leave, but it took a long time. It took decades. Now I'll move on to the eighth section. We are reaching the end. It's the question about the immunity of the judges. While the anti-old god sentiment is increasing, there are talks that taking away their immunity would give us authority over the judiciary. I do not support taking away the power for yourself, Mr. President. The judiciary must be independent and long-lasting. Well, I agree that the current court members are problematic. Wait, you're on the court. This is no way to resolve it. The law is supposed to ensure the judiciary's independence by giving legal protection so they can't be pressured. All right, do you have something to suggest? 
Well, they need absolute immunity in theory, but look at what reality got us. We've got to deal with the most corrupt Chief Justice in the world, with no chance to deal with him. This is tough. It's tough for multiple reasons. Number one, we need enough of the Supreme Court to approve our Constitution. And if we get rid of their immunity, they might not, number one. Number two, we do want the judiciary to be independent. The fear about be making them impeachable, and I think they probably should be impeachable, is that sooner or later a political party could wield that to stack the courts. I would like them to be impeachable, but I'm going to make a calculated choice that I hope isn't bad, is I think we should respect their immunity. We do got to get them to pass this. So we should respect the court's immunity. That might be the best thing to do for now. If we agitate the court further, we might lose our chances with Ms. Ed Edmonds as well. Who's that? Oh, she's one of the justices we need. That's kind of my thought as well. Um, we need the court to approve this. At least that's the only peaceful way I know for us to do it. And this seems like the best choice. And then they still have their independence from the rest of the political establishment. And the last one is the question about Soul's legacy. Basically, his member of honor. Ooh, I don't want to hear about his dick. Uh, sir. Basically, his member of honor law. It gave him absolute immunity even when he's retired. He is a permanent member of the assembly as well. But luckily, he doesn't really attend anymore. Yeah, because he's too busy hanging out on his little island. According to the Constitution, the Member of Honor not only has legal immunity, but the state also covers most of their expenses, as well as providing security at all times. It can only be given to somebody by an absolute majority of vote in the Assembly and the approval of the President. That's why only Tarkin Soul has the title. He gave it to himself right after his military coup. This law is basically made to save the colonel, and it has a symbolic importance for Swordland because of it. We must get rid of this senseless law that protects him. He should be able to face justice for the atrocities that had taken place during his rule. I don't like this rule. I don't want him to have this power. But is this where we need to be a pragmatist? Because we still know there are a lot of people who are very loyal to Seoul, including in the military. I'm not sure if it's worth... I don't know if it's worth it. And, and, and we are a part of Seoul's old party, right? There are a lot of old-timers who are going to like him. Like, I don't know. Uh, I, I think I'm going to make a decision I may live to regret. Oh, damn it. I think we should leave him with this power, and I'm going to regret it. But... Oh, I can't say no to justice. We could keep the title, but take away the immunity clause. That would be enough to hold him accountable for his actions. But why would you want to keep such a title, Mr. President? Because we need to show that we still have reverence for this guy, because he's got a lot of supporters who might try and create a civil war or something. I don't think he's a great hero, but in some, some ways, Soul is a hero, right? He did start us on the path to a broken democracy, but a democracy. So regardless of him, I see no problem with having a sp special title for great heroes, Nia. Well, regardless of what Mr. Rain decides, we will need to work together to push this agenda. I thank you all for your input. After placing the committee's report and my own notes in front of me, I buried myself in the papers. Is that like trying to climb under a pile of leaves? Hee <laughs> uh, Would you please stop playing in the papers there? Oh shit. We gotta do it for real now. According to Article 77 and 82, the President may veto a bill by returning it to the Assembly with a written statement. The articles do not contain any information on how to override a veto. As a consequence, the President has absolute veto of power that cannot be overridden with a supermajority in the Grand Assembly of Swordland. Now, we're not going to remove vetoes altogether. I think I kind of misspoke in an earlier meeting. We're going to have a limited veto, meaning a three-fifths majority can override our vetoes. Section 2. 
constitutional amendment process. According to Article 5 of the Constitution, an amendment that has at least 150 signatures may be proposed to the Grand National Assembly. A two-thirds majority vote in the Grand National Assembly and a simple majority vote in the Supreme Court is required for an amendment. As a consequence, the Supreme Court, which is not a part of the elected legislative branch, has voting rights that give them enormous power in the amendment process. All right, so we're going to remove the Supreme Court's voting rights. Or at least we're going to try to, right? This has got to get approved all in all. Section 3, impeachment of El Presidente. According to Article 17, the President of Sordland is not responsible for the actions performed in the exercise of presidential duties, except in the case of high treason or violation of the Constitution. In such cases, the President may be impeached by the Supreme Court in joint session with an absolute majority of its members. Therefore, the impeachment process only includes the Supreme Court, and it gives them great power over the executive. So we're going to change that. To get impeached now, I wanted to get rid of the Supreme Court totally on this, but I don't think it's an option. The Assembly and the Supreme Court would both have to vote um, with majorities to get rid of the President. Section 4, Appointment of Ministers. According to the Constitution, the President appoints the ministers to the Council of Ministers from elected members of the Assembly. We may introduce a confidence vote by adding the line, the President may nominate ministers, which will require a confidence vote from the Grand National Assembly for their appointment. Or include the Assembly more in the process with, the Grand National Assembly may nominate a list of ministers, which the President may appoint. We're going to go with a confidence vote. If somebody has been elected president, they should at least have a chance to try and pick the minister, cabinet, cabinet ministers they want. You know? The president proposes, the Senate dis disposes. Section 5, Electoral Threshold. According to Article 50, a political party needs a minimum of 10% of the total national vote to win seats in the Grand National Assembly. The votes of the parties who pass the threshold are redistributed proportionally, meaning USP, which currently holds the lead, that's our party, would be the main beneficiary. Decreasing the threshold may allow the Workers' Party of Bludia and the Communist Party of Swordland to be elected in the next election. Um, they So I want to decrease that threshold. I want more people to have a chance to get representation. Decreasing the threshold may allow the Workers' Party of Bludia and the Communist Party of Sorland to be elected in the next elections. Um, so our choices are, we don't change things, which gives us an unfair advantage. Decrease the threshold to 8. We're going to go all the way down to 3%. The reformists are going to be like, you're so crazy. Yes. Presidential decrees. According to Article 18 and 51, the president is able to issue decrees on political, social, and economic issues that would carry the force of law. They could not contradict the Constitution and are subject to judicial review. Therefore, the president may issue decrees in many subjects without going through the Grand National Assembly. However, the Assembly may pass legislation on the same subjects to override the presidential decrees. We may include the Assembly in the process by requiring an enabling act from the Assembly to be able to enact decrees or remove them completely, making the Assembly the sole lawmaking authority. Uh, yeah, I'm willing to do that. We talked about that in the meeting. Uh, decrees will require an enabling act from the Grand Assembly. Term limits. According to the Constitution, the president shall be elected to serve for four years. However, there is no mention of a term limit, allowing one individual to be able to run, be elected, and serve as president without limits. Easily, we want two. Uh, we want term limits. Our choice is up to two terms. Section 8. Immunity of justices. The Constitution gives the justices of the Supreme Court absolute immunity before the law and describes no procedure of impeachment, making them untouchable, like, don't touch me, by other branches of government. We may describe an impeachment procedure by giving the Grand National Assembly the right to propose an impeachment of a justice on the legal grounds of unconstitutional behavior. This is the one we said, I'm not going to change. We're going to, this might bat, bite me in the booty. 
but we're gonna leave the justices with their immunity. Section 9, Member of Honor, Rights of Tarkin Soul. Article 99 of the Constitution defines the Member of Honor title and the rights their members may exercise. A Member of Honor has absolute immunity and is considered to be a permanent member of the Grand National Assembly. They are given control of their own personal security team provided by the state's presidential guards. A member is also eligible to live in a special private residence by the state for free. The only person who holds the title is Tarkin Soul. So even the previous president, uh, Ewald Alfonso, does not have that. We're just going to remove the immunity of the member of honor title. He can keep the, uh, uh, the title. I don't care. There we go. Those are the decisions. After I made my final changes for the proposal, I showed it to my team. They read the changes and discussed it amongst themselves. Lucian spoke afterwards. It looks like the amendments are ready to be proposed. Uh, but I have to say this too. The new electoral threshold will be really difficult for the party to accept. Our guys are not fond of that idea. Oh, that's true. It will be tough to get all of their support. Some of our members may try to openly fight against this. Well, guys, we'll have to figure it out, won't we? We will all do our best to make it work, sir. I knew you would, Lucian. Any other comments before we proceed? I don't think I have any problems with the changes. Me neither. It looks like we can proceed immediately. I will personally work on the wording of this proposal with my hand-picked legal experts. With Ms. Morgner's reputation as the most experienced attorney, our proposal will be bulletproof. Chief Justice also will have a hard time convincing others to oppose it. Good, good. We want the judiciary to want to support it. In the meantime, you must introduce this proposal to our party. You will need to get them to back us. If we want to pass the assembly... That's going to be the harder part, is getting our party all in line. Sir, I advise you to first talk to the leaders of both conservative and reformist wings of the party. As far as I'm aware, Mr. Clavin supports the reforms already. Alright, so if we got like half of them, the hard part's going to be Mrs. Tory. Mrs. Tory will be the real problem. She became the real heavyweight after we left for the executive. She got fat? Oh. Any advice in regards to dealing with them, Petey? As Mr. Vector said, uh, Mr. Clavin will probably be easier to persuade. Uh, we need to unite the party under this, so his support is vital. Mrs. Gloria will be tougher to break. The problem is that she's capable of turning the moderates and the conservatives against us. As much as I don't want to say this, if she makes demands to change the proposal, you may need to give in. I don't want to give in, but thanks for the advice. Oh, well, I wish you good luck with the party, sir. I think we can end the meeting there. We all shook hands and left the room. Well, they left the room. Oh, man, what is this? A current proposal? News? Oh, man, so much to see. Let's look at the news. Richter's victory over rain. Holy crap, the paper is saying that we just caved to Richter. No, I want these changes. What's the economics say? Unleashing energy, an analysis of the EPA's potential. They're proposing that the Environmental Protection Act that uh, prevents foreign companies from owning more than like 20% of companies should be repealed, but Congress just voted on that and disagreed. If I remember correctly. And there's going to be a festival in Benfi. I don't really think that's that important. All right, so there's a cultural party there, and what is this current proposal? Oh, wait, these are uh, all the changes we want for the Constitution. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Well, everybody, that's going to be the end of this episode. I don't know if we're going to get this Constitution passed. It might be a little bit too revolutionary for and too reformist for our own party but we're gonna try i'll see you maybe around next time